Hi, and welcome to this Revit tutorial where you will learn how to model this amazing architecture by Bjark Ingels Group, big in Revit. So this is a really interesting building and what's really interesting is that this curved facade doesn't actually have any curved elements, they're all straight elements and we'll be modeling it all using in-place mass, curtain systems, curtain walls, doors in curtain walls, 3D text, looking at materials also. We won't be looking at the interior in too much detail, although we'll model some of these floors. Um, but we will look at the concept quickly. So there's an existing site and building that gets extended and then looped back around to create a donut, then set back for fire. Then the facade is pulled down to create this space inside the building. And you've also got the courtyard inside there as well. Uh, before adding the faceted folded facade to the project. So it's a really interesting building. I really hope you enjoy this tutorial and learn something from it. If you do, please leave a like and share. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe, hit that bell to get notified and check out the rest of the content on this channel and in the description below. Uh, otherwise, let's get straight into it. So into Revit and we're going to be working in plan elevation and 3D view but we're starting off in the plan view, level one, and we want to bring in our reference images. So go to wherever you've downloaded the images off the internet and I will leave a link in the description below to where you can find these images. And then just click and drag firstly the plan into the plan view. And then we want to scale this. So come down to the scale bar, scale, pick the far left, pick the far right, and then type in 40 feet. It's worth noting also that even though we're working in metric that we can still type in uh, imperial dimensions like feet, yards and inches and it will still work. Now we can start to add our reference plane so architecture reference plane and I'm going to start by just adding this one across here and if I select it I'm just going to copy it across to the far right so I've got two here, and I'm just going to nudge it to get it precisely in that spot. And this one also nudge that across using my keyboard. And we can now, uh, I might actually dimension these just to give it a nice round uh, number. So go dimension, pick these two and drop that up there. So 63, 200, um, it's actually pretty good. And then we can draw another one in the center. So copy this from here to the center and we can use the dimension tool again so di or dd and dimension that and drop that there and just hit eq again to put that in the center now we can also do the same the other way so we can we can actually select these because it's a circle we can select all three of these go rotate copy and then click here and just rotate 90 degrees and it's already added the others. And with them selected, I'm just gonna nudge this up. So all three have been moved up. We've still got this one in the center. And this here is pretty perfect. It's a little bit, this, this corner is a little different because it's not part of that perfect circle. Um, but you can see that line there is pretty much spot on. So we're happy with that. Now we might actually add one more little reference plane in here while we're here. So RP or reference plane and add that there. All right, now we can do our elevation. So go to the south elevation and same thing again. Locate your image, drag it in and click to drop. Now, if I move this out of the way for a moment, you can see we've got one, two, three reference planes and I might actually just drag this up a bit. So we can see them a little clearer. And we've got two levels in here, but we're not worried about the levels just yet. First thing is we want to move this. So move from that point onto the far right reference plane, like that there. And then we can also scale this. So scale from that point to that point. And then you can pick where you want to drag it to. So the third point is on that reference plane. You can see it's snapping there like that. So we've got the width sorted and now we can also move it vertically to get it in line with that level one on that ground floor. So 
over there like that. So that's our elevation now sorted in width and height. We can start to work with that. I'm just going to pick these levels and drag them out for a moment. Like that. And I'm going to add some levels in here. So the most important level really is the roof level. So I'm going to call this roof first. And yeah, sure. And then move this from here up to the roof level. And I believe there is also, if we look in the model, there is a couple levels inside the building. So you can see one, two levels in there. We've got the ground floor, which is called level one in our Revit model. And we've got level two, level three, and the roof. So we're gonna add two more levels in here. So if I select this and just go copy with multiple ticked on, and I just drop it there like that, and I think we can probably uh, we can probably just make those equal as well. So dimension, click each of these levels, click to place, and then click the EQ to make those all level or all equal. And that's pretty much it for the elevation at this point. So we've got our reference images in, and now we're ready to start massing. So we go to level one floor plan, and to create a mass, we go to massing in site. In place mass, you can give it a name, but we don't need to, so click OK. And we're going to start by drawing a circle. So circle, start in the center point, and then come out to the intersection of the two reference planes there, like that. And then same uh, here, you can start from the center circle, and then come out until you reach the edge of that courtyard, like that. And now we just need to draw some more lines in here and a couple more lines down here. So firstly, let's tidy up this area here. So a straight line to that reference plane, to that reference plane, and to that intersection. And we can actually tidy that up now. So if we split this as well, we can split this and split this. Like that and drag this back in to there. This one also, if we just select tab to select that and delete it, and then pick this and drag this back into there. Uh, if we look in 3D, it might help visualize that a little better. So that's all we've done there, we've just tidied that up. Um, we go back into the plan view. We can also do the same on this end. So I'm going to start by drawing this line from there. I'm just snapping to the intersections and then trim that up. So trim or TR like that. And we go to 3D. We can see that's that shape there is pretty good. Uh, the only thing is that this is on level one and we want that to be on level two so as well. So we'll select it, copy, paste, align to selected levels and move that, sorry, not level two, but to the roof. Okay, like that. And then now we want to modify this down here. So if we select this again, actually we'll go to the plan view. So just to uh, get this shape out here, we want to go straight line from here down to that intersection and to that point there. And then we can select this and drag this back out to there. So if we take another look in 3D, we've got basically two lines or shapes. Uh, the top one is basically that circle, uh, or three quarters of a circle. The bottom one is the same, but it's got this edge here which will match that there. So we've just created the two profiles. Uh, before we blend them or create the form, we're going to create it in two parts. So I'm going to add an extra line from here to here and then split, oops, split this line there. So, and we can now grab the tab to select that there. So if we go to 3D, basically selected that there. Um, and we can go create form, solid form, like that, and then drag this back down to that level. 
Now, this part here, we don't actually need to model or mass the whole thing because we can uh, do it easier in Revit with actual walls and actual floors. So what we want to do is just tab to select this line here and then tab to select. We might need to split this as well actually. So if we go split and I come in here, I might actually do that in the roof plan view. Let's try that again. So split and split this uh, in here. And I might actually do it there because I want to oops, control Z for a second. Split, split it there and then tab to select this line and then bring that back to there. So we're just going to use this arc here. So 3D view. So with that arc selected and then tab hold down control and select this straight line. We can go create form, solid form. All right. So the rest of it, we can still use those as references, those lines. Um, and it, but it shows you that we don't actually need to mask the entire thing. We can just mask the bits that we need in order to apply more accurate and uh, more accurate Revit geometry. We're talking floors, walls, roofs, ceilings, things like that. So now that that's done, we can apply our facade. So finish mass, ignore that warning, and then architecture, we can do curtain system, and I'm going to come in here for a moment, and let's go edit type, duplicate, and we'll call it uh, facade system, and we will, for grid 2, we're going to set that to none, so this is where we're creating those big beams, so each of those big beams that are on the facade. So grid 2 we set to none. Grid 1 we can set that to fixed distance and then we want to give it some mullions. So for now I'm just going to give it just these mullions here. Oops, like that. Uh, actually we're not going to give it any borders for now. We'll just go OK. And then click both of these and create system to give us that there. Now there are actually mullions in here, you can see that, but they're tiny. So to get to, re before we resize those, we just want to check their size. So if we go to the south elevation, have a look in here, and we can just measure uh, that. So measure from there to there, about 3.2 meters. So if we go back to 3D view, and we can... Uh, go to families and minimize this. You want to come down to curtain wall mullions, rectangular mullion, 50 by 150, and duplicate it. So right click, duplicate, and let's call it uh, facade mullion. Big, just in case where we need to create another facade mullion uh, for the entrance. So enter, right click, type properties. And let's make the thickness now 3.2 meters. And the dimensions for the width, I would uh, guess, let's say 5 up, probably less than that. Let's say 400, 400. We can also change the material in here. Uh, but I won't go into that in this tutorial. There's actually another tutorial that I've made uh, that I think is really helpful to show you how to create a material pretty much really similar to the material in this project which is that, uh, that there, that copper kind of core 10 type material. There's a really good tutorial there um, if you want to check that out. But we'll leave that as aluminium for now and hit OK. And now we can select this curtain system, go to edit type, and then change the grid 1 mullion interior type to facade mullion big. And go OK. And voila, we get that which is looking great. And now we can start to do our floors and we'll do the rest of the facade. So to do floors, I don't. Uh, I think it's actually easier to do it properly rather than by face in this case. So I'm gonna go uh, architecture, floor, and pick lines and we can set it to, let's say 300 mil and hit tab or we can go to the plan actually might be easier and pick each of these like 
like that. So we have our floor. Looks good. Hit the green tick. Let's go to 3D view. So the floor's there. And we can actually hide off the mass now. So if we go mass in sight and click this little drop down and go show mass by view settings, we can hide that mass. And we can select this floor and go copy, paste, align to selected levels. And I'm just going to do the roof first, like that. Edit boundary. And we can just select this actually and just drag this all the way around to there. And then select these. Hit backspace to delete. Green tick, like that. And we can now also, just to match the that maquette that we were looking at a moment ago, we can add those levels in between inside of there. So if we go back in here and we can do copy again, paste, align to selected levels. And we'll start with the lower one, like that. And I'm not sure exactly, we don't have a plan to see exactly where that is, but I'm just going to go edit boundary and probably just offset this, uh, maybe like a meter or so. If we go to, oh, we select it, so offset, and let's just do maybe two meters and offset that in there. Hit the green tick, and then with it selected, copy, paste, align to select the levels. Level four, and voila. Um, <clears throat> and now we can add the rest of the walls and this entrance wall here as well. So we can go to architecture, wall. I'm not sure, I think these walls here might be a curtain wall of some sort, but we're just going to do it as normal walls for now. Like that. Pick line, and we're not worried about the height because we're going to attach them. Location line, we want to make sure we set finish face exterior and then come in here, make sure that we're on the exterior like that. Same here. This one here is definitely solid. Escape, let's try that again. Pick line, make sure we're on the right side like that. And There we go. Now with all those in there, if we hit tab, we should be able to select all of these. Oh, so I've accidentally created another wall. Let's go back, control Z if you make a mistake. Hit tab to select all of these, and then attach top, and you can just pick this roof there. Got unjoined elements like that. If this one isn't going the whole way up, you can just drag it uh, like that there to complete that. Now we can quickly do this facade as well. So probably best to draw that in the plan view. So if we come to floor plan and come in here and we'll start by architecture wall. Uh, we do an architectural wall and we can use the storefront to begin. And we want to draw that from here all the way across to about there, like that. Select it, just make sure also uh, that the exterior, or these arrows are on the exterior. So if I click that again, those arrows are now on the exterior. Um, so this wall is facing the right way. And we can actually, if I drag this here, we can move this in there like that and drag this back to that wall. All right, so that is in there. Let's have a quick look in 3D. All right, so that wall is there. And we want to just change, obviously, these panels and make it fit this profile. So first thing is also this, uh, you can, uh, this facade here, there's, I believe, in the design that there's an extra, there might be an extra beam there, although I can't see it. I'm not sure from this model. Um, can't see it that Clearly, but I think that actually looks okay. So we're going to just work with with that there. Um, if there's a little bit of glass there like that. You can select that and make it an empty system panel like that. Just get rid of it. Now we can uh, take this and we can move. Uh, we can edit that profile to make it 
uh, fit that there. So if we go edit profile, pick lines and pick the underside of this and then trim and use each of these. Click, click there and then select that delete. Hit the green tick, delete elements. And then we can change the grids here. So if we select this and go edit type and let's duplicate it and we'll say entrance and we can change the layout from max spacing to fixed number and horizontal from fixed distance to fixed number okay because we know from the images that there are I believe 18 panels across and so there's Across there we have 18 panels, so 1, 2, 3, 18 all the way across, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to ignore that one there, that seventh one. Um, or we can actually add it in and then modify these, but we're going to leave that as 6 for now. So come in here, and now we can change. So horizontal or vertically, we want 18, that's right. And then horizontal, we want 6. Apply, like that. And if you notice, the lower ones are actually a bit taller than the others. So we're going to fix that up as well. And we can select that. So tab to select that grid. Like that there. And then we can unpin this. And we can actually do that with all of these. So unpin all of these grids. For a moment, and this one here, tab, select, unpin, and now I might actually do this in the elevation, it might be a bit easier, and we can actually hide this off now, right click hide and view elements, and if I just add some dimensions from here, uh, leave that there, that's okay. Uh, actually, I might leave this one out for a moment here. Actually, drop that there. And this here, so they're 1800. And the lowest one, we actually want that to be a little bit higher. So you can see if these are about 1800, this probably needs to be about 2200 uh, just to be high enough for that door clearance. So if I hit tab to select that grid there, we can change this one to, I'm just going to make it uh, 2400 that and then I can select these dimensions and just hit EQ and it'll adjust those so we've got a taller one at the bottom and slightly uh, shorter ones at the top that look pretty close to this to be honest and it looks good we're happy with that next let's add some doors so to add doors here we need to add you can see here that the door starts from about halfway or partway this panel and it goes to the second, third, fourth, and half, probably about halfway or a little bit into the fourth panel is the last one. So we're going to create these double doors here in this curtain wall, and it's really simple to do. The first thing is we need to split the, we need to get the curtain wall right, and then we can just drop some doors in there. So to get the curtain wall grid right, we go to Architecture tab. We can go to uh, Curtain Grid, and let's add in. I oh, want to make sure we pick one segment here, and add in far right one and then the far left one something like that and now we want to delete these in here so if I hit tab to select this and then remove segments and then pick that line there like that and then same thing here so tab a few times till you get that grid line select it add remove segments and then pick that grid line again so it removes that. So now we've got, I'll go back to our 3D view. You can see that there we've got two panels here. Now if I tab, that's an entire panel that we can uh, do something with. So if I hit this pin to unpin it and come to this drop down, you can see that we can swap it out for different things. We can swap it to different walls or we can also swap it to different doors, but we don't have anything loaded yet. So what we'll do is come up to insert and load family and you'll, it'll probably bring you to this window and you just want to come into curtain wall panels and if you click the first of these you can actually just cycle through them 
and choose a door that suits. So we might even just go with that curtain wall storefront double. Looks good. Open to load it. Now when we select these panels and make sure that they're unpinned so we can change it, you can pick this drop down and you can change it to that curtain wall storefront double door like that. And if I tab this one, I can do the same thing with this panel as well. Select that and the double door like that. And the other thing is just to show you this facade here. So you can see that the mullions are a little different to this. Here the mullions are actually set behind the facade or in line with the glass. So we're going to try and do that here also uh, just to make it a little bit more visible because the glass is quite transparent. If we go edit type and change that material from glass, uh, I'm just going to actually bring the transparency down a bit to yeah, about there. Go OK. OK. So you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see there that it's recessed a little bit uh, behind that mullion. And we can change that though. So if we select this and go edit type, we can change the offset here to zero. Uh, sorry, that will actually bring it to the center. So I'm actually going to do that just to show you how this works. So go OK there. So that's with an offset of zero, you can see where that is there. And if we go to the plan view, it will make a bit more sense. So when it's offset zero, it's basically in line with that center line. So we want it out here in line with the facade. So if we go dimension and we dimension from here to there, we get 63 mil. Or if we click that once, we can see here the more precise value. So 62.5 mil. So that's the offset that we really need. So if I tab again, select that panel, edit type, and come into the offset, and we set that to 62.5, go OK, and you can see now that, you can delete that zero, you can see that they're in line with that. If we go to our 3D view, you can see there that's perfect, so our glass is perfectly in line with our, with the exterior face or edge of our, our mullions, it's flush. That's perfect. Um, the next thing, or well, the last thing is to add some text around this entrance. So to do that, we can if we go to the south elevation. We can add some text here. And if we go back here, we can see here that it says Eisenberg School of Management Business Innovation Hub. And it looks like it's sort of solid or extruded text of some sort, not just painted onto that glass. So we can do that really easily with 3D text. So architecture, model text, pick a plane, OK and then just tab here until you get that face of the curtain panel and click OK and then we can type here now just to get that spelling right Eisenberg School of Management so capital Eisenberg School of Management and hit OK and just place that anywhere for now and then if we select it we can go edit type and make this a bit smaller so let's go for around 300 mil and let's rename that to 300 mil okay and move that into position and then we can also do business innovation hub so with that still selected copy drag this down and edit type duplicate we'll make this one about let's say 200 mil and change the size to 200 like that there we go and if we look at that in 3d now we've got that text there so we can also change the depth of these 150 it seems a bit too much so maybe if we do something like 30 mil in there that's looking much nicer so that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed that and learned something from it. If you did, please leave a like and share. Also, if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out my description below and channel for more content. Um, there's plenty out there that I'm sure you'll find interesting or helpful. Otherwise, thanks again. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.